Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, glad to have you guys here. Today is October 11th, 2019. You know, and I'm amazed by what's going on out there. You know, I was reading this morning, quite literally, there's a group out there of uh, activists who are actually putting super glue on their bodies and gluing themselves to everything. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get started. Let's open up the charts right here and let's take a look at this. This is the first real breakthroughs are starting to come through on Brexit, you know, and Boris Johnson, uh, he's met with the Irish leaders and they're starting to see a pathway toward some sort of a Brexit deal. This is the first breakthrough in a long time, you know, because this has been a big holdout is this is the Irish, uh, I think they call it the Irish backstop. Anyway, this has been a big holdout. And uh, if they can get this solved, this is this is pointing the direction toward a, a deal getting done. But the deadline is coming very soon, so we're going to have to wait and see what really happens here. The deadline is on uh, the 31st of October. They're going to fall out of the Euro of the European Union on the 31st of October. Probably deal or no deal, you know. But uh, we're seeing uh, 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 that. There could be some sort of a last-minute deal coming here uh, with Boris Johnson, you know? He's pushing for this. But I'll tell you what I think my opinion on it all is. Is Britain is going to leave the European Union, deal or no deal, on the 31st of, of, of this month. I think, I think that's what I think. That's my position on it. I don't think they're going to go for any sort of new referendum or any sort of... Uh, extensions this time. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be a deal or no deal. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens with this, but this is a new development, and it's really pretty big. Uh, let's take a look now at the silver price today. We see uh, the silver price right now is uh, it's trying to hold its own in this, in this range of around 1750, but it's having a hard time of it. Uh, it's let's take a look at gold and see what gold's doing. 1482, uh, 1483 ask. Down $11.30 on the day. Now, around 1475, you know, is a is an area I see as a as a resistance level. I don't want to see gold break through. I don't want to see gold go below that 1475 resistance. And this morning we've seen an $11.30 drop. Uh, I don't like to see this. Uh, but, you know, we're living in very, very strange economic times right now. And uh, everything is out of whack. The central banks are printing money like it's going out of style. You know, and they're starting to print money like it's going out of style. And yet gold and silver don't really seem to be able to quite catch a bid yet. You know, we're in a little bit of a fuzzy area right now uh, in economic terms, you know. Because normally when you see central banks print, printing into infinity, and this is open-ended. What they mean by open-ended is it ain't going to stop. They're just going to keep printing. Uh, gold and silver should be more than catching a bid, you know. But this chart looks kind of weak and sick, you know. Uh, let's take a look now at cryptocurrencies today and see what they're doing. $225.5 billion. Let me refresh the page and see if it's still 225, 225.8. So it's going up right now. 66.7% Bitcoin dominance. Uh, we see the coins are a bit of a mixed bag. We see red and green here and there. But uh, overall, Bitcoin has been starting to go back up again. It's been creeping up slowly. Uh, that's a good sign. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But uh, it looks to me like, like it's starting to catch some energy, cryptocurrency again. I'll tell you what I think. I think when it hit around $3,500 and it turned and went up to $13,800, I think that was the beginning of the bull market. 
And I think what we're seeing is a little correction in the midst of a bull market. I think we're still in the bull market. I think that the correction has almost played itself completely out now, and we're starting to slowly starting to swing back up again. That's what it's looking like anyway. Dow Jones Industrial Average today. Refresh the page. 383 points up. I guess they're hopeful for a trade deal, for one. And also, on the Dow today, we see a reflection of central bank monetary policy. Open-ended printing to infinity, basically. And so the market is picking up on these, on these things. And uh, the market is up 383 points today, which is a really nice gain for a day in the market. Uh, 26,879. We're approaching all-time high. I think the all-time high was 27,332. And we're at 26,879. So we're only about 400 points off of the all-time high. You know, in the market. Uh, the market really hasn't went anywhere for the last couple of years, you know. And uh, so if we break through and we start to really move to the upside with the market, it'll be the first time in like two years it's really starting to take off. And we're going to have to wait and see. But this is coordinated along with central bank policies. They actually have the audacity now, and a lot of people believe it, that they believe that they can interrupt the business cycle and stop recessions, never have a recession again. I think that that is a bunch of baloney. I think that the that that that's never going to work. Just printing money and trying to keep this uh, expansionary policy going forever is impossible. Of course, it's going to collapse at a certain point. But uh, their answer is to print even more when it collapses. Take a look now at crude oil prices: fifty-three dollars and seventy-nine cents. It's up. Uh, a half a percent, basically, up 24 cents on the day. Uh, this has got a lot to do with, uh, for one thing, there's a tanker burning. And uh, I, I guess nobody is coming to its aid. It's just sitting there in the middle of the water, burning. And so, uh, well, what's really unusual about this is the fact that it's an Iranian tanker. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but I mean, a radio tanker? Really? Uh, this is weird, you know? Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries today. Uh, what we're seeing is U.S. 30-year, 2.2. 2.1% and yield rising. You know, we're seeing some pretty darn substantial rises in yield in the long end of the, of the curve. The U.S. 7-year at 7.7 .7 basis points and also the 5-year at 7.7 .7 basis points and 7.5 basis points for the U.S. 10-year. That's big. That's a big move in treasuries. i keeping my eye on this very carefully because I've been telling you guys if we can see several sub, sub, several consecutive days of this happen, right here, we could see a rebound effect in the, in the in the yields on the long end of the curve. And you know, the United States is so far in debt, they can't afford to have high yields. High, these high, uh, they can't afford to have the the uh, the the. They can't they can't service the debt. If yields get too high. And you know, this is in a hyper bubble, so they have to keep it in a hyper bubble. Uh, let's take a look now at, uh, at the US dollar index and see what it's doing for the day. Now it's at 98.22 and it's dropping today. It's dropped almost a half a penny. What I find unusual is the fact that gold. If we take a look here, it's dropping too. This is not the way it should function. Generally, when you see a, a rather substantial drop in the dollar, right, you see a corresponding rise in the price of gold. That's the way it's supposed to function. 
You're not supposed to see gold go down and the dollar go down. Or the opposite of that, gold, gold's going up and the dollar's going up too. That That's not functioning properly. So because we're seeing this drop, a uh, substantial drop in the price of the dollar today, the do U.S. dollar index, it's, it's corresponding to the drop in gold. They almost look exactly the same. Look at them. There's a drop in the dollar. There's a drop in gold. I, I think that later this afternoon we're going to see the gold price stabilize. Uh, I don't see it dropping any further than where it is right now. Because because of the dollar dropping as much as it has too, you know, because this is this is an anomaly when you see both dropping at the same time like this. It's not supposed to happen that way. Uh, for the first time ever, this has never happened before. Greece is issuing negative yielding debt. Now, who in their right mind is going to pay Greece to hold your money for you? <laughs> Is going to buy. They've been bankrupt a long time ago. They've been playing this game where the they they're not really bankrupt because the European Union has to keep them going because they owe the European Union so much money that if Greece went under and couldn't pay that money back, then then the European Union would collapse. Then they would be broke. Greece owes massive amounts of money to the European Union. So what the European Union does is they lend them a little bit more to make the payment. Basically. So, can you imagine if you had a tenant, and if if he was living in your place, and that was that was what, I mean, if you lend him money to pay the rent. So, you give him the rent money, and he gives you the rent money right back again. And this is how you're making your, something's wrong with, this is, just don't work, don't work. But, now that country is so deep in debt, so broke and everything else, Greece, they're even issuing negative yielding debt. The world has gone upside down and crazy. Absolutely crazy. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this report. We'll catch you again very, very soon. Do a report this weekend for you guys. And you guys have a great day and give me a thumbs up. Bye-bye, guys.